All right. Welcome, everybody. Thanks so much for being here. If you have not located the chat yet, please do. Uh, we'll be kind of accessing that throughout, and I want to encourage any questions or uh, comments or insights that you have and, and feel like sharing, um, please do. Right now, we're talking about where everyone is from, um, and we're going to go ahead and get started. So we're somewhat on time <laughs> today. Um, so again, access the chat. It's being moderated by my colleague, Tristan, and he'll be able to address your questions or concerns throughout if I miss them um, while we're together today. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in. Um, welcome again. Really glad to see uh, some of us here today. We offer these webinars and workshops monthly, and they're free to anyone and everyone, whether you're, you know, whether you've been a client for years or if you're just starting the whole process of gamification and wondering what it's all about and, you know, kind of browsing, all are welcome. And uh, I also want to say a fond farewell to all of our clients as well. Um, I've really enjoyed getting to know all of you. <laughs> Um, and this will be my last webinar with C3 as I approach my last day with the company here at the end of the month. So I just want to say I wish you all of the best. Uh, C3 Softworks will remain passionate about learning and development um, that is engaging. Uh, you know, effective training is a crucial part of, of healthy organizations, as you all well know. So C3 will continue to uh, endeavor to partner with you uh, to achieve that. Um, so a little bit about C3 Softworks, in case you're brand new here. Um, a few things that we believe in. We believe that learning should be fun. We believe that learners who are having fun are engaged. And we believe that engaging the learner is the critical first step in effective training. Also, a friendly tip, any words that are underlined or bolded throughout this presentation may or may not be in our review game that we will play later uh, in Dash, our newest template in the Bravo Zone. So before we get started with the presentation, we are actually going to play a little micro game to celebrate Star Wars this month. Uh, we did release a May the 4th Be With You game earlier this month. Um, that allowed for a, a free 30 day license to the Bravo Zone. So if you haven't seen that, uh, you can find that on our social media sites or things like that. But for now, it's just a fun, you know, quick um, icebreaker to get us started so that people can grab a coffee or a snack and people who are trickling in can, you know, get settled in. Um, and we can have a quick little mental refresh is really the name of the game here. So, uh, Star Wars trivia. May the force be with you with this. These quick, the, very quick questions and trivia. So the rules are pretty simple. You will be using the chat in the webinar to submit your answers. This is purely for fun um, and propriety. So you know, play or don't play, up to you. Do or do not. Right? Which should be located. The chat function is located at the bottom of your screen. Three total questions, uh, 60, 20 seconds each for the three questions, okay? So question number one, what did Luke Skywalker lose in his fight with Darth Vader? You're submitting <laughs> your answers in the chat. You can either use the letter or the full answer, either one, up to you. Okay, timer is out. I need to pay attention to that probably. Uh, Luke does lose his right hand in that famous scene uh, from The Empire Strikes Back. So another famous thing about this scene, in case you need some extra trivia and nerd knowledge, uh, is how often Darth Vader is misquoted as saying, Luke, I am your father. Instead of what he actually said was, no, I am your father. So if you learn nothing else today, you will learn some Star Wars trivia. Okay, next question. On the moon Endor, the creatures called blank helped the rebels defeat the second Death Star. 
Ooh, quick on the take on this one. Yep. I hope this one was kind of easy. Okay, timer is up. Ewoks is it. So here's some more useless trivia for you. At no point during the movies were these creatures actually referred to as Ewoks, but George Lucas, Lucas, Lucas named them Ewoks to pay homage to the Native American subculture called the Miwok that inhabited the Redwood Forests and the San Rafael uh, area in Northern California where these scenes took place. Okay, last question. What was the original title for the Star Wars movie? <laughs> Wookiees would have been a funny answer too. Okay. Whoops. Whoa, sorry, everybody. Um, I'm having some technical difficulties. Okay. A New Hope was originally called The Adventures of Luke Starkiller, as taken from the Journal of the Wills. The rumor is that the title of the first saga was changed after some critical feedback and group collaboration helped change the concept into the space opera juggernaut we know it to be today. So Mike and Donald are right. Again, we were playing for fun. So <laughs> thank you for participating. And I just want to kind of pause and acknowledge that a little bit of play can go a really long way with helping to kind of refresh and reset a more positive mindset, bridge some gaps that you didn't even know were there, perhaps. Um, and this is kind of an important through line for why gamification is essential in learning and kind of business in general. Taking time for fun with a purpose um, is important. It's important for both business metrics and for the mental health and enjoyment of the people in your business. So uh, today we will be focusing on a quick overview of gamification why you should consider gamifying some of your content, uh, a brief exploration of some science behind some new question types that we offer, and of course, some tips and strategies to take with you before we play a live game together, followed by a quick behind the scenes look at the new builder if time allows it. Uh, and then we will be done and, and wrapping it up, maybe with enough room on your block time to enjoy a few minutes to yourself. So when you think of assessing knowledge, gamified content probably doesn't come to mind immediately. But what if your learners could have a novel experience that also helps identify their knowledge gaps in real time? Gamific gamification works as a non-threatening influencer of positive behavior and performance in this way. Uh, it helps to boost knowledge retention and general enjoyment in your training program. It kind of puts the fun in functional and helps to reinforce sticky learning through repetition and application of newly learned skills or knowledge in a fun and engaging way. So feel free to join the chat with what you might add to this list or any insights you have had using gamified content uh, whether it's ours or other people's, doesn't matter. Any insights are welcome. Uh, gamification promotes active learning where participants can have ownership in their learning process. To keep this viable, however, it has to meet some requirements that I call the three M's of gamification. So first, it should be motivational, cross-cultural, and interactive. Gamified content really helps bridge and build connections this way. Second, it needs to be relevant and meaningful and ideally accessible for in-demand learning as well as in-person. People want and need to learn on the job. So this means, lastly, it needs to create an experience that is memorable, but it also needs to reach the learning objectives, right? So this can be challenging in remote and virtual environments, and it's where gamified content can be incredibly useful to create long-term impact with relevant and just on-time learning. Plus, 
Gamify content encourages learners to apply and practice what they are learning as they are learning it, which allows people to improve performance that is directly applicable to their job functions. For fast and fun knowledge assessment, word stem questions can bring the heat in a functional way. So fill in the blank questions can acutely assess comprehension by mitigating the room for guessing with no predetermined answers such as multiple choice questions provide. So this forces the learner to supply their own answers, which will reveal what your learners actually know in real time, both for their own development and to inform the instructor. These question types can be leveraged for a wide variety of topics and skills for fast and fun auditing purposes as well. Word stem questions can start with who, what, when, and where, or to measure simple skills or specific knowledge, such as terms, facts, data, scenario training, uh, principles, methods, or standard operation and procedures. Question stems encourage your learners to think more critically about their answers, which helps deepen their understanding. By using fill-in-the-blank questions that get increasingly more difficult or complex, you can efficiently identify where the learning is sticking or not sticking. We can take some cues from the revised work of Bloom's Taxonomy, which presents a theory of cognitive benchmarks when designing learning objectives from, from simple to complex. So the best fill-in-the-blank questions range in difficulty and provide a way for learners to move up and through applied knowledge. So we start with lower order thinking to access engagement and then increase the rigor. For example, we might craft a question stem flow, something like this. We start with remembering such as terminology recall, who did what, general facts, et cetera. We move to understanding such as deductive questions or reasoning, state in your own words, et cetera. Then to applying, such as asking them to fill in the blank with their own answers for comprehension checks. And then lastly, we want to include a way to analyze by asking what the relationship between blank and blank is. And there are more steps to this taxonomy, but these might be the most applicable to gamified word stem questions. In summary, Fill in the blank questions are the beginning to open ended questions that serve a learning function and really help to clarify comprehension. This type of questioning is most effective when the information is still fresh and top of mind for the learner, and it works as a fantastic review and revisiting method in a fun and kind of frenzied learning experience. Then we use this experience to promote active learning and dialogue among peers. So there's a social learning component involved as well, which is especially appreciated likely from your remote workers who might, you know, other, otherwise be offered that type of connection. So as your learners engage in synchronous learning, either in person or virtually with their peers, you will have more time to focus on participation and performance. Many people are familiar with this learning strategy, probably from primary school or e-learning scenarios. But what if you could gamify this for an instructor-led experience that makes this style of knowledge assessment fun and engaging, even as maybe a team building event? So please add to the chat if you have already experienced this or uh, have other ideas to add. So now that we have explored the benefits of some word stem question styles and of assessing knowledge, let's circle back to how gamification serves an important role in that process. So gamification plays to the human nature of friendly competition and the intrinsic rewards involved in self-development. This reward system is a large component of why gamification is so effective. And it's actually kind of an ancient way of connecting people to their goals, uh, to others, 
and really to themselves. So when learners have the opportunity to practice and apply newly acquired skills and knowledge, they feel more autonomous in their own learning journey, which means more productivity and a better bottom line. So now we, we will get to put words into action and experience a live game together, powered by a template in the Bravo Zone called Dash, which features these question types and more. And a couple of quick tips to set you up for success for our game. You can use your phone or any device with internet access to participate. Some of the question types will include fill in the blanks that will require you to type in your answers. So if you type faster on a keyboard versus a phone like me, that may influence your decision here since there are bonus questions for being the fastest. And there are also list question types, sequencing, and of course, some multiple choice. At the bottom of your screen, you will have a submit button once you want to submit your answer, okay? So I am going to get our game here. Give me one second. All right, guys, my uh, internet is giving me some issues today. One second here. Okay, my apologies. I think we're good now. Uh, let me reshare my screen. Oh, nope, sorry, one second. Sorry, folks, I have not encountered this before. I'm not sure why it won't let me do this. I'm sorry, one second. Okay, hopefully you can see my screen. Can everybody see my screen now? <laughs> Okay, perfect. All right, so we are going to play our game now after a very awkward uh, fumbling of getting my screens and internet and everything to work. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so you have two options to join this game. You can use the QR code and scan in that way, or you can use the link on the bottom, copy and paste that into a browser, when it asks you for a four digit code, you ask or you submit the 0016 code here. So two options. We're going to allow a 
about a minute or so to get everybody in if they want to. Participation is not required. We will be reviewing basically what we just went over. So we're staying true to the top of the mind and knowledge that is fresh um, from, you know, the few slides that we just went through about word stem question types and gamification. So uh, in about a minute or so, I'll probably get this started or less. If you still want to join and this QR code goes away, no worries. You can join with the link on the bottom at any time. All right, we have a few people, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So round one, and by the way, there are bonus points uh, per question for answering it the fastest, and there are bonus points possible per round as well. Uh, and we'll look at some of this if we have time in the builder. You have a lot of options and how you want to use this. Um, so yeah, again, at any point, if you still want to join, if you're still with me <laughs> on the bottom here, there's a link and then the four digit code, all right? So here's a preview screen that I'm using and it's just, you know, prepping people to get ready. So we said our mission at C3 Softworks is the following. We believe learning should be blank. We believe that learners who are having fun are blank. And we believe that engaging learners is the critical first step to blank training. You are submitting your answers into the field and then hitting submit. Some of these are tough and some of these are not so tough. So do not fret. Great, Mike got the first right answer, way to go. Very good. There are a few hints involved, you know, halfway through if, uh, if you're really struggling with what that ans answer is, you get the first letter of the correct answer. Okay, timer is almost up. And here are our answers. We believe learning should be fun. Learners who are having fun are engaged and the critical first step to effective training. Perfect. Great job. There are also partial points awarded to, you know, if you got two out of the three answers, you get partial points for that. Um, and that is an optional thing as well. And then here is a slide that I presented that I am now presenting again to uh, reinforce what we went over. Um, and you could use this the very same way as an instructor. You can load your PowerPoint slides or whatever material material that you're using right into these game functions. Um, so you can you know repeat and reinforce. So, all right, Team C3 won this. And again, this is in a team mode, but it could be in an individual mode. Today, we're just kind of doing it for fun and with teams. Next round, here we go. So this will be another fill in the blank question. So get your fingers ready. Gamification is a non-blank influencer of positive behavior. Very nice, Eric. Good job. Okay, your hint has been offered here. Also, as an instructor, I can watch this bar over on the very left hand side of the screen to watch um, to make sure that everyone's had enough time. But as the timer comes counts down, um, you may or may not be able to submit your answer. Okay, non-threatening influencer. Great job, everybody. There is our summary slide again to uh, reinforce this particular answer. Okay, Team C3, pulling ahead, but we have more questions, do not fret. Round three. So this is a list question. 
Um, so no particular order is needed for your answers, but it is a list and you will be typing them in, okay? So the following are the three ends of gamification that we went over. This one might be tougher. Wow, Eric, very nice. Okay, well, yeah, there are the three M's, so <laughs> not sure if that helps you, but they do all start with M. If for some reason you're not able to submit an answer, you may need to refresh your browser um, so that your whatever device you're using will allow you to enter your your, your answers. Okay, motivational, meaningful, memorable. And if I hover over these, um, I do get a little bit of a percentage, right? Of, of how many of us answered this correctly, basically. Um, so as an instructor, that gives me some valuable information about maybe where learning is sticking and not sticking, right? I mean, this is for fun, but if this were a serious learning application, um, that might be super helpful. So there is our screen um, where we talked about the three ends of gamification. Okay, come on, Team BZ. I know you can. I know you can pull ahead. I always root for the underdog for some reason. All right, round four. Fill in the blank as fast as you can. No pressure. So word stem or fill in the blank questions help with acute blank assessment. Okay, we're about halfway through. There is your hint. And we're about uh, three fourths of the way through our responses. 10 seconds left on the timer. In the timer, by the way, you can uh, customize as well. I set these all to 60 seconds. So these questions help with acute knowledge assessment. Very good. And there is our slide once again to uh, repeat and reinforce. Okay, next round, round five. We only have a couple left. This next question is a sequencing question. Um, so the order does matter. Here's the good news. You don't have to type it in. You'll have a drop down menu of options. So you're going to want to start with, uh, you know, your sequencing in that way without revealing the answer. So Bloom's taxonomy is a model of learning that proceeds with low level to high level cognitive tasks. Please put the steps we discussed in order from simple to complex. Andy, wow, very fast. Great job. Okay, you're about halfway through. So you're using the drop down. Um, to put the, the steps in order. Okay, timer is counting down. And there we go. First step was to remember, second was to understand, apply, and analyze. There was our slide once again. 
um, to show what we went through. Nice, Team BZ, all right. See, I told you, you could, you can still get this. Uh, round six, another fill in the blank questions, get your fingers ready. Word stem questions should be used when knowledge is still fresh and blank of blank. Andy again with the quick draw. Very good. About halfway through the timer. In this case, um, it's not case sensitive. There are alternative spellings available too, um, which we'll discuss in a minute. There are your hints, if that helps. Okay, and time is up. It was when knowledge is fresh and still top of mind is what we went over. Okay, Team BZ coming up from behind. Round seven. Anybody sweating yet? I hope not. This is just for fun. Blank is a friendly human driver of motivation. Way to go, Andy. Somebody was paying attention and I deeply appreciate that. <laughs> uh, as an instructor, this is really where the acute knowledge assessment comes in. Um, we're playing for fun, but you can maybe infer at this point that there is a lot of uh, ability to identify knowledge gaps. Okay, we are halfway through the timer. You have your hint there. Something that we talked about being a friendly human driver of motivation. Tristan just put more of a hint in the chat for you. And competition is the answer. Very good. This is where we talked about that in our presentation. Okay, pulling up from behind. Here we go, final round, final round, folks. And it's a multiple choice question, Phew, right? I hope it's a gimme. Fastest one to do it. What is the name of the template we are currently using? Mike got the first right answer, very good. Uh, this is an optional setting that we have. You can see some of the answers coming in live. Um, so hopefully that helps <laughs> with your <laughs> decision-making process. It is close. Pretty sure someone's just playing with it at this point, and that's just fine. We are having fun with the purpose. Okay, very close to being done. All right, so the brand new template is called Dash. That is our brand new template featuring the question types that we have been going through. Um, so, Team C3 won this round. Let's see. Okay. Team C3 wins. Great job, everybody. Thank you for participating. If I go up to these tabs here, I can uh, look at individuals and give some shout outs here. Andy, Mike, Eric, Brad, and Amy. Wonderful job. Um, rounds two, I can get some information on what the most challenging concepts or questions were per round. Um, and that is really beneficial to me as an instructor 
as well, right? Uh, I can look at what maybe needs to be remediated and what needs to be revisited, what didn't stick uh, in our, you know, <laughs> the last 30 minutes together. Um, so that's super helpful information as well. Now, um, if you have questions, please feel free to uh, put them right into the chat. I'm going to take just a couple of minutes to bring you behind the scenes and look at the builder and, and how we can build something like this very quickly. Um, so if I go into Dash, I can hit Start. Uh, and I'm going to, it's going to walk me right through it. So I'm just going to say this is a test. This will always be instructor-led, meaning you will always be facilitating this with people. You can do an assessment mode, which um, just doesn't have as many of the frills and, and um, gaming elements, but it does still allow points in a leaderboard. Or you can do the game, which is what we just played. And then we hit create. And so now we are in our question builder. I'm going to go find my demo library. There we go. Um, so here is the game that we just made. Now, I can click here to start entering my content. And I have my options right on the top of the question types. So if I want to fill in the blank, I'm going to use three underscores for each fill in the blank option. Um, and you can find an example here if you need it. Or I can do the list option, I can do the sequence option, or I can add a slide like I did to reinforce or to introduce a concept, et cetera, et cetera. Um, maybe I'm using the preview or summary slide like I did in our game to do so. And then we also have a multiple choice question type um, to give, you know, sometimes it's nice to relieve the pressure for just a minute. Um, and so basically, I am going to create my question here. The answer is blank. I have put three underscores and there it is. Now I'm going to supply the possible correct answer and I can do multiple. So if the answer is true, I can say true. And then I can do, if I wanna make this case, case sensitive, I can make it case sensitive. Um, I can add possible misspellings here, et cetera. Um, and you also have your media and audio options here as well. So that's that's the, the gist of it. You're going to supply your fill in the blank answers, include any possible misspellings. Um, each question has a settings that you can go through if it is case sensitive, which some answers might be, you toggle that on. Um, if you wanted the fill in the blank to be in the correct order, you can toggle this on. Uh, there are a lot of possible settings per question that you can play with depending on your learning objectives. So there is your question for a fill in the blank. We're going to hit save. And now we have that here. Now, I imported all of my questions from the game we just played into the question library. The library is a really nice function that allows you to save a lot of time for any kind of repetitive training that you might have. Uh, onboarding, HR, compliance, sales training, even whatever it might be, safety training. Um, anything that you want to save into the library will allow you to drag and drop into the builder, any of the builders. So this saves a lot of time without having to recreate the wheel every single time. So um, if I want to use this one, I'm just going to drag and drop it, right? And then there was our, our mission at C3 Softworks is the three fill in the blank questions. Here were all of my possible alternative answers. Um, here was the preview. I added my little sticker here uh, under my media types. And then my summary question was here, and that was the slide from our presentation. So all of those things come with you when you drag and drop, which is really nice. You can have a lot of content ready to go, and it saves a lot of time. We'll hit save. Okay. Um, maybe I want to add a sequence question, right? 
Um, and if I want to understand more, I can click on this, but sequencing, um, pretty straightforward. They have to answer in sequential steps like we did with the Bloom's taxonomy. So uh, you're just going to make sure that your question is concise and clear for them to do so. Um, and then you'll submit your possible answers down here. Uh, again, you can um, make sure that this is flexible as possible for your participants um, so that when they're using that dropdown, it's fairly clear into you know what they need to do. Uh, but the sequencing can have a lot of implications for healthcare, for sales, for really kind of any industry that wants you to understand procedures and methods and um, workflows, right? So uh, it's great for that. And it's a fun way for people to engage and assess their knowledge. We'll get out of that. So this is the question builder. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. Tristan will be, be doing another webinar um, with a lot of behind the scenes on this on May 31st, where he'll be doing the build a, a game live workshop. If you have not uh, signed up for that, feel free to do that. Um, and then the rest of the builder is pretty uniform to uh, what Bravo Zone offers. So you can, you know, customize your background with some templates here and brand it with your own logo, et cetera. Uh, your options here are, are similar. Once again, you have uh, devices as a response mode. You can do teams like we did today, or you can have everyone play individually, really up to you and, and what you feel like doing that day. Uh, you can have up to 10 teams if you have a larger, you know, uh, session that you want to engage people in. And then here are some of the settings. Once again, you can determine how the bonus points work, how many points, whether they get them or not, uh, et cetera. Uh, you can manipulate the game text in the interface that people see when they're playing. And then, you know, down here, if you want additional information uh, without having, you know, an LMS style of tracking performance, you can just simply um, add the information into these fields that you might need, including, you know, what was the session time that they played, anything that helps you kind of filter and tag information as an instructor um, while still allowing you to measure and track performance. And then your very last step here is always to publish, and that basically means this link becomes live. Uh, that link is very versatile. You can use it in a wide variety of ways, hopefully not um, crash your computer like mine did earlier, but um, you can use it to embed into a picture. I like to embed it into a word or a picture or um, some kind of, if I'm using PowerPoint or Canva or whatever I'm using to do a presentation. Um, I can click on that and it opens a browser window, usually <laughs> pretty seamlessly, um, so that it doesn't seem clunky like it did today, uh, quite frankly, but um, usually it can be a much more seamless process. And then you close out that browser window and you're back into your presentation. So um, that can be super helpful uh, in that regard. The sign-in required, I'm not going to get into that a whole lot. We're pretty much up on time. Um, but this practice mode is great. If you ever want to try this, in Dash, we have a brand new feature, uh, which allows you to see the participant view. This means that when you're building it and you want to test it, which, of course, you should, when you turn this on, you get the participant's experience of playing in Dash without having to, um, you know, use your phone to sign in and then try to manage two different functions. So the participant view is really nice um, to give you that informed experience of what your learner uh, is having. So those are those are the quick uh, <laughs> the quick views on on Dash here. Um, we're out of time, so I want to wrap this up with um, saying thank you to everyone. I'm going to uh, put the contact information hopefully back on the screen here. And um, if you do have 
any questions, I'm going to hang out here on the chat. And uh, I really appreciate you showing up today. We're going to be at ATD in case any of you are going to be at ATD. We're in booth uh, 1519, I believe, under C3 Softworks. Uh, you can register for that webinar right on our, our uh, website here. If you go on our website under demos, you can schedule a webinar here. And then those possible, uh, the last one will be available for you right here on our website. Maybe Tristan can throw that into the chat or I can here actually. There you go. There is the, the website. Um, if there's any more information that we can possibly provide for you, please let us know. And thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we really look forward to uh, talking with you, uh, engaging with you, helping you find some ideas, if nothing else, <laughs> of, of something to take away with you for your learning and, and engagement programs. So um, yes, thank you very much. And to the clients who are still on, uh, I've really enjoyed getting to know all of you and I, I hope you take good care. Thank you.